Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to use Azure ML Studio's Matchbox Recommender algorithm and technique. So to do this, let's actually just recreate uh, both. Well, we'll start with the movie recommendation example that they have from their own experiments, but we'll recreate it from scratch just so we can talk about each uh, pill and what's happening. So let's start by creating a new experiment and begin by collecting the data that we're going to need. Well, and also give it a new title. So let's call this movie recommender okay so for this one instead of using our own data set like we have in the past we're going to go to Microsoft's data set I want you to scroll down and grab their movie ratings database and then their IMDB movie titles so uh, to understand how this data is structured um, if you've had a database course before consider a many-to-many -many relationship between movie titles and customers and then the uh, relationship for movie titles to customers is going to be many to many because a customer can watch many movies and each movie can be watched by many customers. As a result, that means you're going to need an association class or a linking table, whatever you want to call it, between those two uh, tables that represents instances of unique movies being watched by unique customers. So that's what our movie ratings table is. Go ahead and visualize this and see what I mean. So here, uh, whenever you have one of these uh, association classes or linking tables, you're going to have an ID of the two um, or a foreign key representing the ID of the two tables that connect to it. So here's the unique ID of the user and the unique ID of the movie. Now, uh, for this for this to work, we actually only need this database right here. But the problem is, what it's going to do is return a list of um, IDs, and to make them make it easier to interpret, we're going to go ahead and join in. The movies table that has the name of each movie so that we can make it easier to interpret the analysis. When we get a movie ID prediction back, we can actually get a title for it instead of just a number. So that's the only reason why we've now pulled in also this right here. This is our movie titles database. Let's take a look at that one. All we have is a list of IDs and movies. Pretty straightforward. Oh, and I forgot to mention on this last one, of course, this is the table where we're going to have the rating itself because a rating is associated with a unique, a unique instance of a consumer in a movie ID. So I believe, um, well, if I, I'll take a look later, but I've tried this out before. I, I think it needs to be in this order where it's ID, ID, rating, and timestamp. But uh, let's move on. So next, uh, I'm going to pull in what's called an edit metadata pill. So uh, the purpose is to make sure that um, the ratings themselves are of uh, integer type. So let me show you where I get this from. Edit metadata, there we go, and data transformation. Pull this in, connect the pill, click on this guy over here, launch column selector. Okay, and we're going to grab the rating. Move that over. Okay. All right, there we go. And then um, here we've got the original data type, or uh, what we want to change it to is integer, and uh, leave categorical unchanged, fields unchanged, uh, new column names unchanged, just like that. So this is a way of making sure that that rating that comes through is converted to an integer if it's not already an integer format. Okay, next, let's join this new edited version of movie ratings and this one together with a join data. Here we go. So let's pull this one in, join this side, join this side, and you can probably guess what this is going to want to know. What are the two columns that need to be joined? That should be straightforward enough. This is a primary foreign key relationship. So this is the, oh, which side am I on? Oh, this is my, okay, recommender. So we want to use a movie ID here, check. And over here we want movie ID. Okay, so we're uh, tying movie ID to movie ID. And uh, inner join means that uh, only the, the records will be returned where there is a matching movie ID. So if either table has a movie ID that doesn't match the table, it's going to ignore it. All right, let's move on. And next, uh, let's do a select columns because there's some here that uh, we may not need. So come here and grab a select columns. And data set, there we go. 
pull this down. And what we want now is because we've done the join, we no longer need movie ID. So let's uh, begin with none and let's only include what we need. We're going to need the user. There it is, user ID. Uh, we're going to need, come on, why is it appearing like that? User ID. Uh, we need the actual rating. And then um, we're going to ignore timestamp in this analysis. And instead of using one of these IDs, we want movie name. And I believe we want it in that order. Perfect. Yep. So we'll leave it just like that. Okay. Let's next, um, another useful tool that we haven't taught in previous videos that this is a good time to teach and use is the remove duplicate rows. Now, why would that matter in this data set? Well, because people can watch the same movie multiple times. So uh, they, they could potentially rate the same movie multiple times too. So which one are we going to want to keep? Hmm. Well, let me show you what the options are. Click right here, column selector. First of all, let's uh, remove based on unique combinations of. So allow duplicates and preserve column order and selection. So no, we're going to leave that deselected. And we want unique combinations of user ID. Come on. And uh, movie ID, not rating. Or movie name. Yeah, because we've selected columns at this point, it's going to have to be movie name. All right, perfect. Check that box. Let's go ahead and just run it to this point. Make sure everything's working out okay. So notice our options over here. Re Oops, one second. Can I click on it now? Yeah. So we have this option right here, retain first duplicate row. Hmm. So do we want the first one? I would think actually that we want the last one. Um, in the example that Microsoft gives, they keep this one selected, so they want the first rating it was ever given. I guess it would make sense to keep that one in this case, because if you're going to predict someone's first rating of another movie, we should use their first rating of this movie. Anyway, that's something you obviously you could fiddle with and see what gives you a better prediction. I'll leave it like that for now. Okay, next, we need to do, uh, we've got our data already. It's joined. Um, it's nice and clean. We have just what we need. Let's do a uh, um, split data. So just like we did before in our last experiments, we always need a split data to make sure we're not overfitting the model. Oops. Pull that one down. Why are we right-clicking? Oh, I'm going to turn this thing off. Come on, turn off. Off. There we go. Okay, on our split data, um, we have, it's a different type of split. So in the past, we just did a split rows, but there, it's a, uh, for the recommender, we need to use the recommender split, which is a little bit different. So we have um, fraction of training only users because uh, the data is formatted a little bit different. So the row is the rating, but we want to do the, we want to do the split though, based on the users, not based on the rating. So, uh, yeah, fraction of training only users, fraction of test user uh, ratings. So the for the testing, we do it based on the ratings. Um, for the training, it's based on the users. Uh, this one, again, we have quite a few rows. Let's just up this one to 0.75. Okay. Um, next, let's get a, it's time to train the model. So, Train model is a little bit simpler or different um, with a recommend with the Matchbox recommender because we don't have uh, multiple options for algorithms. There's only one. So instead of a train model, we want train Matchbox recommender, and it has three inputs. One's for split data. These other two are not for algorithms. We're going to use these not in this example, but in our next one because we can bring in other types of data. So if you think about it. Um, what else would be useful in predicting what somebody would like? How about characteristics of the customer, like demographics, um, personality preferences, you know, stated preferences, like when someone uh, creates a match of, uh, what do you call it, a Netflix account, I think you can specify certain categories that you're interested in ahead of time. Well, that's data that is uh, unique to each customer. And so I'd have that in a separate data set or maybe, uh, so up here, you know, I have my movie titles data set. I could have a customer data set, and I could pull that one into here. 
In addition, if this data set right here, my movie titles had more information like categories that each movie fit within, I could pull that data set also here into the recommender. Um, and I would do that separately because the only reason I brought this one in is to add a title to the ratings data in this one up here. So I could pull a second one from here down into Matchbox Recommender, but I don't have any metadata in here about the movies that I can use. So for this example, we're going to keep it a little bit more simple, leave it blank. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and run that one now. Give that a second. And um, if you remember, what comes next after training is scoring. So we're also going to use, just like there's a train matchbox recommender, we're going to use a score matchbox recommender. But there's lots of different types of uh, scoring that we can get. So I'm going to actually use a few of these and a couple of evaluators as soon as this is done here. Let me pause it. You guys have probably gotten used to this in me by now. As usual, I forgot to set my parameters here before I went ahead and trained. So it says, cannot process a movie name of type system string. This type is not supported. So what does that mean exactly? So this is what I was referring to earlier when I said the data has to come in a certain order. Um, this is a limitation of Azure ML Studio. This is something they'll be able to fix with future releases, but it's right back up here. When we selected the columns, it's mad at me because it wants the rating in the last place and the movie name second. So it's looking in this middle spot here, or sorry, it's looking in this last spot for a rating and finding a movie name instead. And so it's saying uh, we can't process a movie name. It's not a, it's not a number. It's not going to work. So all I got to do is come back here to select columns and let's flip those around. Launch column selector. There we go. So right here, I'm going to say delete movie name. Come on movie name rating and change it to movie name rating. There we go. Now it'll be happy. Click that, run selected. All right, let me give that one a second. So I want to show you real quick the error that I'm getting and it's kind of ridiculous. I think this is a bug that we might have to fix by deleting some pills and pulling them back in. But notice here that my select columns, I've got it in the proper order here of user ID, movie name ratings. Here's the problem. Uh, when I go to visualize my split data, I, I'm still getting this error. This data type is not supported. So when I right click visualize here on my results data set on split data, notice that it's putting it in the old order that I used to have it in. User ID rating movie name, where it needs to be the other way around. User ID movie name rating. So what I want you to do is delete that train matchbox recommender and the split data right back here to remove duplicate rows. Uh, oh, no, I'm even going to delete this one and my select columns from data set and just start over. Um, I've seen ML Studio do this to me a few times before where it's just no matter how many times I rerun it, it still remembers that old order and messes things up. So I just got to delete and start over again. So to be very clear at this point, what we want uh, is user ID first, movie name, and then rating last. So I'm kind of happy to run into that error, that error just so, or that bug just so I can show you how to handle it. And let's go ahead and run these things one at a time here. Let's select columns, let's view it, let's make sure that it's in the right order. Okay, that's done. Let's take a look at it, make sure it's in the right order. No, it's still in the wrong order. Here's our problem right back here. Okay, so let's see how I can fix this. I almost wonder here if I need to Let's delete this one again, and let's save as um, a new version. Somehow it's still caching that, uh, the select columns that we used to have. Select, let's try it again now, columns. Okay, we want to have user ID movie name, and then rating. So on this new version, hopefully it finally gets things figured out. Let's see. So just so you know where I'm at here, I'm still having the exact same problem and I started a brand new freaking experiment and I'm still having trouble. So here's where I think, recommender example, I think the problem is right here actually. Look at the status detail. Task output was present in output cache. I may need to close my entire stupid browser completely just to get rid of this. So I'm going to pause the video, close everything out from scratch, and start this over again. 
Okay, well, I just wasted a whole bunch of time and found out that my problem is right here. So, launch column selector, allow duplicates and preserve column order and selection, meaning preserve this order right here. Oh my gosh. So stupid. All right, I know it's my fault and I'm the one who's so stupid, but still, it makes me mad. All right, so back to where we were before. We got our columns selected. Let's hurry and throw everything else on there. Get this one working the way it's supposed to. Movie recommender. All right, we need our next, our remove duplicate rows. Beautiful, right here to there. Uh, launch column selector. We want to remove based on uh, movie name. Okay, and then back to our split again. All right, I'm going to use the recommender split. Uh, I'm going to use 0.75. Whoops. Um, am I going to do anything else to this one? No, we'll leave it as is. And then uh, scroll down. Now we want our train recommender. Matchbox recommender. There we go. Okay, pull this side down to this side. Now, uh, number of traits. Think of this as the number of movies we want to take into consideration. So more here is going to be better, but it's just going to take longer. Um, more is going to be more accurate, but it's going to take longer. Um, typically, we want this to be somewhere in between, I don't know, 5 to 20. So 20 is a pretty good recommendation for movies and restaurants and things like that. Number of recommendation algorithm iterations um, again, more is going to be better, more accurate. The question is, is how much more accurate is going to be with more of these? Um, let's up it to 10. We'll call that good. Okay, let's go ahead and run this one. Run selected, get that going. Um, and next, we're going to, like before, finally score model. And we're going to pull out three of these. Let's let this one finish here. All right, let me just show you the results of this one first, though. Uh, visualize the trained recommender. All you get here are the settings that it used. Uh, again, there's no model, um, th there's no weights being generated here like we did with our regression and classification models. So let's just move on and grab the score match box recommender. So this one's a little bit more complicated than the ones that you're used to in the past, but it's not bad. Let me explain it. First, obviously, we're going to pull in the train recommender like we usually do. Second, we need the testing data that's going to come in right here to this one. And then we have three more options. Um, so this one, hover over it, you'll see it says user features. So if we had a table, like I talked about earlier, of uh, details about the consumer, so their stated categorical preferences or um, demographics or something like that, we would pull it both into here for the train, but then also back in here to score against. So similar here, we have, uh, we could use a training data set of the item features. So like details, metadata about the movies themselves, what categories they belong to and stuff like that, which we didn't have. We would also pull that data set into this one right here, item features, um, so that it could use that when it's scoring and predicting the model. This one right here is new altogether. They didn't have this one only a few months ago. Um, this just lets us, I believe, um, let's take a look at that and hover over it. Uh, training data. Not sure where I'd want to pull that one back in. Um, this is something new. Uh, looks to me like it's the same one that goes from right here. I'm not sure why. So anyway, let's ignore this one for now. But no, that's where you'd put the user and the, um, the, the consumer and the movie uh, features. Let's go ahead and score this now. And by the way, wait, I forgot to point out here, I'm leaving the default selected. So there's several types of uh, recommendations we can give. The one we're doing right now is an item recommendation, meaning what movie would they want to uh, um, watch next? And what is the recommendation based on um, uh, recommend, recommended item selection uh, for, this is based on all of the items that they've already rated, not necessarily all items, um, but all rated items. So let's just take a look at the uh, evaluations this one gives. Um, data set, visualize, so this is based on the user, uh, and then 
these are the next five items in order uh, from most to least that we're going to recommend that they would want to see next with the movie titles. So that's pretty cool. This is where we can um, where we can query this, create it as a web service, query it, and we'd get back the uh, an array of up to five items, depending on if it looks like uh, it won't even try if it can't come up with a, a decent recommendation. So um, that's one type. Now let's evaluate this. So let's grab uh, here an evaluate recommender and pull this down here below this score recommender. Bring it in. This evaluate works like before. We could have different versions of columns and different data sets and compare them side by side. But for now, right here, hover over this. Uh, oh yeah, we need to grab the split data and bring it down into here as well. Let's go ahead and run that one. Actually, I may have those reversed. Score data set, I think I might need to flip it. Look at the documentation. Test data set, score data set. Yeah, I do, I've got them reversed. Okay, my bad, sorry. Delete. Delete this one. They should have just fixed it to where it could tell it to me properly. That one goes there, and then uh, off the split over here on this side. Run that one now. Okay, let's see what it gives us here. Visualize. All right, an NDCG. So what in the world is an NDCG? Let me pull that up real quick. Okay, their definition is the computed, normalized, discounted, cumulative gain used to validate the accuracy of items recommended. So uh, I think the way we would use this is evaluate a couple of data sets and a couple of sets of options and uh, pull in another evaluate recommender and see how that NDCG compares. So let's try some of these other uh, features that we have up here available. Oh, by the way, the reason why we got five uh, is this is the maximum number of items recommended to a user. Um, let's try some of our other options here. Let's pull in another score recommender. Score matchbox recommender. And let's put it over here on this side and run out of space here. Let's pull in our train recommender here. Our split. Oh, oh no, I got in the wrong spot. Uh, no, that's right. I want train recommender right to there. That one. I want this, this one right here over here to that one. So I still don't have user or movie user or, or consumer or movie characteristics, but I want to try some of our other options out here. In particular, let's try um, instead of item recommendation. Uh, let's predict what rating they would give to a specific to each individual movie. So just change that to that. Let's grab another, or I think I can just copy here and paste. Copy, paste my evaluate recommender. Beautiful. Um, let's pull in our split data over here. This one to right here, and let's run this guy next. Okay, let's click on this. Um, let's first of all take a look at our score data set. So before where we got a user and the up to five movies are most likely to like, here I get a user and each movie and their predicted rating for each movie. So that's pretty interesting. Um, here I've got same user over six movies. My question is, let's look up and find out how it decides what order to do these in. I think it actually gives you every single movie for every single user. 2,247 rows total. That would be, let's take a look and see here. When we split the data, um, result data set two, that gave us, uh, okay, so it didn't do it for everyone. It just takes the movies that they actually did rate and then gives us a prediction based on what we've learned, what the prediction is for those same movies. So also that seems pretty useful to me too. We could take this and, uh, um, if someone has a question about a particular movie uh, or go through and, and it kind of does what this one does. This I think this one's doing this, but for the top five movies, it does it for everything, then gives you back there uh, whatever the predicted rating is that's the highest for the top five for each user. 
So also kind of cool. Let's take a look and see what evaluation metrics we get. Oh, cool. This one we get the MAE and RMSE again. Um, we're familiar with this one. We've used that before in the past. Again, recall though that the scale of an RMSE is in the scale of the dependent variable. So before when we did it with the bike buyer's data, which varied from zero to one, the, that RMSE came back as a percent because it's between zero and one, whereas this one comes back on the entire scale of the dependent variable. Cool. Let's try one more. Let's grab, uh, let's move this over here. Let's copy score matchbox recommender, paste, move it over here, copy evaluate, paste right here. Uh, let's make sure I get these right again. Train is going to go into this guy. Split data is going to go into this one. Uh, this one's going to go into this side. And the other split data is going to come over into this one. All right, let's run this one. Wait, I actually stopped that one because, first of all, I've got to choose what it is we're going to do, what we're going to do differently. So recall over here with our initial one. Um, oh, shoot, I have to redo it. I lost it. Uh, let me run this one more time. Run selected. So initially we rated, um, we came with this item recommendation for all rated items, meaning it took only the movies they've already watched and rated and says, here's what we would predict that they would rate. Um, so you can evaluate. And we, we do that just for model evaluation so we can see how good are we at predicting what people actually like. So I can look at my score data set, visualize and say, okay, um, Here's uh, what we predict their top five would be. Let's go and look back at the data set and see were these actually their top five in order of what they rated. Now that we've come up with that, we've trained it right here. Now we want to actually implement and decide, for example, uh, let's not just predict their rating for items they've rated. Instead, let's predict the, the rating for all items. Or uh, let's predict, let's just look at only the movies they've not watched before and suggest to them uh, new movies they may want to watch. So let's do it here for all items, but in order for this one to work, we're actually gonna to have to do some other things first. So in particular, um, because the split data set is gonna have a bunch of repeats for each user, um, that's not what we want. What we want instead is a uh, one prediction um, for, well, one user at a time and uh, only so many movies to predict for each one. So what, let me show you what I mean here. Grab another remove duplicate rows Let's pull that one in and let's go from split data here and to remove duplicate rows and come in here and let's select um, we just want unique user IDs and so give us only doesn't matter which row doesn't matter if it's the first or the last just give us uh, remove any duplicates for the user after that I'm gonna pull this up here let's um, do a partition and sample and we'll use that to uh, uh, we're only going to do this for the first hundred movies. I just I don't want to do it for everything. So there's another useful tool, partition. Come on, spell things right. Partition and sample, beautiful. So just to save me time here, I don't want to do it for every single movie. But let's just do the first hundred by going to. Um, we'll do the same top hundred for each one. So right here, give me the first hundred rows. Um, for each user, the first hundred movies, and then after that, let's uh, let's do a select columns because I'll show you what this will give us back here. If we try and run this one right now, it's going to give us a little more data than we want. I think I think we're going to need to select columns. But let's just take a look here. All right, let that run. I'll pause it. All right, let's take a look here. See what we get. Visualize. All right, user. Item one, two, three, four, five. Cool. So naturally, a lot of people are going to be pretty similar, and that's okay. So for each user, here's the top five items we'd rate out of those first hundred. No, no, sorry, out of all movies, but we only did the first hundred users. That's what I meant to say. Wow. A lot of them are pretty similar. You can see where they come up with trending movie names based on the ones that show up the most here. Very cool. This is how we do the uh, recommender. Um, this is it for this movie. Um, we'll do the restaurant example next and also include item and uh, feature details.